Hello and welcome to chapter 11. We are starting this unit talking about vibrations and waves. And our first section is section one. We're going to talk about simple harmonic motion. And this is part A. There will be three parts for section one. So what we're going to do today is we are going to identify the conditions or what makes up simple harmonic motion. That we need to look at a few other things first. So the first thing that we're looking at is something called periodic motion. And any time an object goes through a repeated motion, we call it periodic motion. So an example of a child swinging back and forth on a swing is periodic motion because it's something that repeats, right? If you've got the person here sitting on the swing, okay, they're going to go back and forth. So they repeat its periodic motion. So in science, the term period means something that happens repeatedly over a certain amount of time. So we could have something swinging back and forth. Okay, we call this a pendulum. If you're on a Ferris wheel that goes around in a circle or anything that goes in a circle, it's repeating its path. Okay, so that is periodic. Even the calendar, the days of the week, it repeats every year. The week repeats every week. Anything that repeats over and over again over time is, has a period or is periodic. So a simple example that we are going to start with as we look at periodic motion more carefully okay, is a box attached to a spring. So ideally here we've got this box that's attached to a spring, right? And if we pull it out, we know that there will be an elastic force pushing back pulling the box this way and it would keep moving past that point and compress the spring a little bit and then bounce back this way. So ideally our box would bounce back and forth forever when there's no friction present. But if there's no friction, okay, then we can say that the mechanical energy is conserved and all the potential energy of the spring is converted to kinetic energy of motion. And this process will just keep repeating. So you could kind of imagine that we have potential energy here, and you end up with potential energy here, if you remember when we've talked about elastic potential energy. And in the middle, it's all kinetic energy when the spring is not stretched at all. So if there's no friction, that energy is conserved. It constantly goes back and forth. Okay, and this process will just keep repeating, being periodic motion. In the real world, however, due to friction and sometimes other effects, mechanical energy is not conserved. And that means that this box, as it bounces back and forth and back and forth, it will slowly come to a rest and it will stop moving. This effect, okay, where mechanical energy is not conserved, is called damping. Damping is anything that causes an object undergoing periodic motion, so anything in periodic motion, to slow down and come to a rest. Friction is one of the biggest causes of damping. So now we can look at our special case of periodic motion. And this is what our goal today is to understand what simple harmonic motion is. So here's the definition of simple harmonic motion. Simple harmonic motion is defined as vibration about an equilibrium position in which a restoring force is proportional to the displacement from equilibrium. So what does that mean? Well, one of the key words in there was this key word vibration. Okay, and another word for vibration is oscillation. You should know both of these. Oops, there we go, oscillation. Okay, so those two words, they're synonyms. Um, but what is a vibration? What does that mean? So a vibration is just anything that moves back and forth quickly. So this example here, I have somebody plucking a string on a violin. Okay, and if you're familiar with a violin or any stringed instrument at all, you know if you pluck it, it's going to vibrate back and forth. And you can actually see that when you pluck the string. And it might even look kind of like this. You could imagine this is one end of the instrument and the other, and you've got the string that you've pulled, and it's just going to go back and forth. Okay, so that back and forth motion is a vibration. Okay, or that other word, I'll write it here again, oscillation. 
So now let's look at our definition again of simple harmonic motion. And we're going to look at it by looking at our box and spring situation again. So here's our box and spring. And we have simple harmonic motion. So we've got a vibration, that back and forth movement, about an equilibrium position. So for our string here, that equilibrium position is this line here through the center, right? That is our equilibrium because it's in the middle. It's equal distances from the areas that it will stretch and compress to, okay? So we've got this back and forth motion across the equilibrium position, okay? And here is the really key part that I want you to pay attention. And you get a restoring force proportional to the displacement from equilibrium. What that means is the restoring force is the, this restoring force here, this is the force that pulls it back to center. Okay. Whoops, I can't, ran out of room there. But it's our force back to center. Okay, so in this case, it's our elastic force that pulls it this way and pushes it that way because of our spring. Okay. And this proportional to this placement means that the force increases as the distance from the equilibrium position gets bigger. So when x is really small, if you could imagine that maybe we were right here, we would have a small force. Okay, and same thing down here. If we were right here, we would have a small force. But if we took that a step further, our force would get bigger here and bigger here and bigger here and so on as far out as we could go. Anytime that restoring force is proportional, then we end up with simple harmonic motion. So let's compare and pause here and compare simple harmonic motion and periodic motion. So when we talk about them, the thing that they both have is this repeating motion. Okay. And, but simple harmonic motion, this repeating motion needs to be a vibration or an oscillation meaning it goes back and forth repeatedly, kind of like tapping your foot on the floor. That's a repeated motion, okay? Um, simple harmonic motion, it also needs an equilibrium point. So periodic motion could have a center sometimes, okay? Or it might even have an equilibrium point too, but it also might not, it could also have neither. It doesn't need this because it's just anything that repeats. Like a calendar doesn't really have a center, but it still repeats. Okay. And then the last key part to simple harmonic motion that makes it what it is, is that restoring force that is proportional to our distance and I'm just going to write x here, our distance x from equilibrium or the center. That is the really key part. So really, simple harmonic motion is just a classification of periodic motion. It's a type of periodic motion. But periodic motion includes a lot of things that is not simple harmonic motion. So with all of this, one big thing you might be asking yourself is why do we even care about simple harmonic motion or even periodic motion? Well, what I want to point out to you and show you is that really simple harmonic motion has to do with everything. I already showed you the violin, okay? And simple harmonic motion has to do with instruments, how they work, and music, okay? Uh, it can help us actually make better instruments. Also, all sound. Sound is a form of simple harmonic motion, and we're going to learn about that in a lot more detail in the next chapter. Okay, but it's a kind of something called a wave that we'll get to in this chapter. Also, ocean waves. Really, anything that we can classify as a wave involves simple harmonic motion. And so this can help us understand what happens in the oceans in the world. Other things that are waves are earthquakes. A lot of our studies about understanding earthquakes has to do with simple harmonic motion and periodic motion because they are waves. 
Another type of wave is light and electromagnetic waves. The reason your cell phone works, the reason the internet works, a lot of things like that, they all involve wave motion, which is simple harmonic motion. So why do we care? Well, we care because everything, and I am not kidding about this, everything, if you keep studying science, you will find that everything, even the smallest particles, they can all be modeled as a wave. Okay? And our understanding of waves begins with simple harmonic motion. That is why we'll be learning this. Please let me know if you have any questions about this, and welcome back.